Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Didsbury Art Studio and I'm Sally. And in today's video, we're going to be using this heat away stabilizer, which will allow you to use free motion embroidery on top of it with scraps of fabric. So we'll get all your old scraps of fabrics out. You'll need a sewing machine. Let's get into it. I've got my bag of scraps from projects that I've done this summer and beforehand tipped this one out. So what I'm gonna do is just put all my blues and greens to one side that I'm interested in using and see what we can do with them. Okay, so I've got my stabilizer that I'm going to use. I've got it in this pack here, basically. It's just another way of using, and I might do in one of these little samples just to show you, but that's with the water soluble fabric. And this also does a similar thing. So I'll show you how to use it. And you'll just need an iron, some fabrics and the sewing machine. I'm just gonna cut a couple of different sizes off. And I've got all my fabrics from the scraps bag. And yeah, there's tons to use here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start laying them out onto this stabilizer. So you can cut the fabric in any sort of shape you want, really. And you can use frayed fabrics. You just gotta be careful it doesn't go too thick. I'm just gonna scatter these around and then I'm gonna look at what else I would need. So I really do want lots of different fabrics to be used in this. So that's quite a nice little piece there. I might do it that way. Okay, let's, let's see what we can find anyway. That's a nice little bit of organza. That's quite nice to overlap with. I'm liking these little frayed edges. You can exaggerate those a little bit more by manipulating the edges. Oh, I like that one. Nice bit of silk fabric that's been dyed from a previous project. Haven't decided yet whether I'm kind of going dark into lights. I'm going to change the shape of that one. Backing into it a little bit there. Even that little bit there, look at that, stretching it a little bit. Let's go with a bit of this frayed chiffon. I don't like the pink in shirt edge, that's too contrived. I just want it messed up a little bit. Oh, this will be good. This is like a kind of woolly one. This will be good for fraying with. And you can use lots of different thread colours with this too. With the colour scheme. Quite liking these little bits whether they are going to be too dark, don't know yet. Then we have got more marbling left over. This was on some cotton fabric. Just don't like it really. I just, I just want it messy. Now that is perfect. 
Again, I don't want to see that pink and sheared edge on this. I don't want it as neat as that at all. Look at that edge. Lovely. Got some green organza. That's beginning to fray as well. Oh, that would be good. A little bit of scrim. Don't know if I'm really wanting this layout just yet though. Don't know. Darker at the bottom. So to begin with, I'm actually going to use this pale minty thread to go underneath and I'm going to use a blue, pale blue on top and I'm going to use straight stitch and I've got it on free motion embroidery and my little piece, get the thread up and I am going to start sort of in the middle with this one. Sewing down sort of and going kind of horizontally across and I'm starting in the middle and moving out. I'm not sewing everything down to begin with and I'm just really being very uber careful to go quite slowly on anything that I feel is a little bit more textured and thick. So just take your time. And because I'm using the pale blue, it's standing out a little bit on some of the darker fabrics, but it's going to be a little bit more subtle on some of the others. So you can get different effects by changing, obviously, the colours of your threads. Because we've got a different thread colour underneath, it is showing up a little bit, which is quite nice. It's just giving a little dimension to the piece. I've got this very short, thinner bit of silk fabric. We need to be really careful that this doesn't get tangled in the bottom of the free motion foot. And take the pins out as I'm going along to. These are brilliant, these, these flat pins, and they're really long. Got them from Hobbycraft a while ago. A little bit of a pucker there. Let's pull it out, see what's going on. So the other thing you can do is just, if you want a bit of height, a bit of texture, a bit of a ripple in your fabric, I've done this before in, a, in another video. I'll try and remember to link it down below. Decide where you want that ripple and then just put your free motion foot behind it and just sew. I'm just doing sort of circular motions behind it, but you can get, get these little ripples in the fabric. Okay, that's what we're going to do here. I'm just going to sew. And what I'm doing is I'm leaving some threads hanging off because it just adds to the textural effect. So I've got one little bit of lace left here and I'm just going to add it to the side over here. I quite like it just about to go there. I'm quite happy with the amount of fabrics that are on there, the types of fabrics, colours going on. It gets a little bit dark at the top there, but yeah, I'm happy with the strips. 
on the layering, the frayed edges. So now I am going to iron this and burn away the stabilizer. Now obviously with this, if you like it on that background, you could leave it on there if you wanted to. I just want some of these raw edges showing. Okay, so you need your iron and it needs to be a dry heat. It needs to be hot. And what's going to happen is if I just hold the iron on the stabilizer there, what happens is you can see it's just burning away like that. So I want to get rid of all of that stabilizer. Do you know what I think I might do? Just do a bit of burning on the back as well. You can see, you can just brush it away. It just burns. I've got it on maximum. Okay. And this will just rip and brush off as well. And if, if you find it's not doing, you can just put the iron back on it and hold it for a bit longer. You just grab a brush and you can just brush that off. So that's it with all well, I'll show you on the back. Nothing there, show in the front. If you can just sort of rough everything up a little bit after it's been ironed there with your fingers. I don't know how well you can see that, but you can see through some of those fabrics. And just to finish off with the instructions from Heat Away Brush Off Stabilizer, it says here that for delicate fabrics, try a lower heat setting for a slightly longer time. Okay, for this next one, I actually want to do some more and use some of the other fabrics in here I didn't get a chance to use on that last one. So I'll have that one nearby so that I know what to try and avoid using on the next one, although I'd like to overlap on some of them. We are getting there, still gravitating to the same sorts of fabrics which I kind of thought I would. I've gone with longer strips this time and I want them to sort of definitely go off the edge of this fabric. And I've slanted the stabilizer that way just to see what we can do. I'm loving that little flounce that's been created from that Volcanza fabric. Yeah, we'll have a bit more of that. Right, I think this time we will have a go with the zigzag stitch. Okay, so I've got it on quite a wide zigzag. Let's just get a little bit of the middle bit down. So I'm still using the pale blue and notice with the zigzag stitch, I'm dragging it from side to side and you can kind of get a little bit more of a linear effect. Obviously, if you go more slowly and you turn your fabric, you can get that parallel zigzag effect, more coverage on the fabric. And there's lots of threads hanging about here, but I'm gonna keep them because I quite like that. I've got a green bobbin now, which we're gonna see whether that shows through underneath this pale blue top thread. I don't want it to go too dark. If it does, then I'm stopping. If it just shows through at like little flecks, I'll be happy with that. Really not showing up at all. I feel like this little area is a bit empty, so I've got a little bit more of this scrim here. Let's just try. It's got a nice bit of thread tangled in it too. I think something like that. And then we need something down here because that's, that's a bit empty too. So I change the direction of that fabric. Is that strong enough? Hmm. Mm. What's, what's that? 
too much the same as that one. No go. Something light. That's nice and puckered, isn't it? It's got pencil line on it though. I think that's leftover from fabric crushing. Let's try. Shape that up a little bit. A little bit of that. Which way around though? That way? Or that way? I have to make sure my stitch goes over that pencil line. Okie dokie there. I've just sewn on that little bit there with a little bit of zigzag and also the scrim there at the top. Roughed it up a little bit there, kept all those threads on, like in the flounce and the dyed fabric under there with a little bit of netting over the top. So we just need to iron it off now. So I've just ironed it and just creasing it up a little bit, scrunching it up, brush. You can see the difference between them both. This one I kind of feel like I've gone for more lighter fabrics it just feels more delicate this heavier one and also as i said i just wanted more rugged shapes coming off the side and maybe it's going to be something that you could have a go at yourselves whether you want to do some card making whether these could be used as samples in coursework or whether you want to use this idea on the mannequin just popped it on the mannequin just to see how that would look. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today with free motion embroidery on Eataway Stabilizer. So I hope you enjoyed this video today and if you did don't forget to give me a like and subscribe and hit the notification button so that you can see when I upload next. So I shall see you in the next video, brand new video. Take care of yourselves this week and I'll see you shortly. Bye!